Good morning everyone. Welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I want to start working out the embroidery of our fourth panel. Now these, uh, if you've just found me, these are four mini mood boards for the project Roxy Journal of Stitchery and this volume is number four. And it's the fourth, of course, in the uh, six month blocks that we've been working through. And this one's called Treasure Hunt. So I've selected to play, pay homage to a seamstress in my family, my grandmother, a little bit of my mum and a little bit of me, but pretty much my grandma, who was uh, a wedding dressmaker. So in the process of all of that, we're making a new outfit for my treasured honey bear. So you're already wondering what type of channel you've tuned into here. We're making a little dress for Honey Bear. She's my treasure. And in order to work out exactly how I'm going to proceed, because I had this beautiful pack of fabric, I needed to make some mini mood boards, breaking down some of these colours. This was three packs of fabric, if I remember rightly. Um, and it's a mix of linens and very, very fine cottons. So, in the pack, we established there was a blue combination. So, this was the first one I did and it's had a little bit more uh, work done to it because I'm sort of keep picking it up and adding things. Like yesterday, I added this little trim that I found in my stash. So, I plan to spend this afternoon in my craft room doing a little bit of tidying up because I'm getting to the end of packing away the first project, which was down the garden path, and sort of building everything up ready for this particular project. So whenever I do a big project change, I tend to do a full revamp of the room to a degree, because you sort of get sick of using the same things. For example, my lace bucket here, I really need to sort that out and freshen it up with some new bits and pieces. Otherwise, you're sort of pulling on the same stuff so that's my plan for my room this afternoon. Um, now, I haven't done anything more to pink and I haven't done anything more to purple. And as these will go into a signature within a journal, which is also a project within the um, treasure hunt, the dress for Honey Bear, the journal, and then the mannequin that's going to be a full 3D presentation of the seamstress. This will be joined on a page and these little morsels of, of uh, crocheted doily will pop around the side like that onto the piece and there'll be fabric going here that they'll all attach to which forms the you know the signature. So the plan was to put the neutral neutral one next to it as you would open it and then the blue one would go on the front but I don't know now that I'm working on the neutral I'm sort of thinking it could be the front but that's a decision for another day so yeah let's work on this one we'll pop all these away oh the little dress this is really for the ones that have just found me I've had a little surge in um, subscriptions um, yeah, subscribers. It's not a subscription. If anyone thinks that you're subscribing to something and there's a fee or a, uh, a locked in thing, it's not. It's, it's really just showing the YouTuber that you'll want to come back and watch again. And that's how YouTube uses their, I guess, what's the word? Um, I know they say analytics, but it's how the big computer works out whether you want to be bugged by me again. So by clicking subscribe, you're sort of becoming part of my tribe, so to speak. And then there's a little bell that you click that and up pops on your phone or your iPad, a little message every time that your favorite YouTuber puts out a video, which is really handy for um, the ones that might make a video once a week or once a month. I definitely recommend you click the bell on those because, yeah, you sort of tend to forget, don't you? Especially if you watch a few creators. The little bell's really handy for the ones that may put out one every four months. 
So yeah, really just general information. I did find too in the back of my YouTube that only 38% of people who return to watch me on a regular basis are actually subscribed or um, yeah, have clicked the subscribe button, which I thought was quite interesting. And I think I heard one of the other girls who is a creator say a similar sort of figure. I think it was like 36% or something like that. So it must be a bit of a uh, a bit of a thing out there. And I know I watch heaps of different um, YouTubers and I'm not necessarily subscribed, subscribed to anyone. Um, so yeah, I just thought that was quite interesting. So I'm making a more of a concerted effort to click click the subscribe button, especially when you, you spot a YouTuber that's so close to 100,000 subscribers because they get this plaque that um, from YouTube, it's like silver, and when you hit 100,000, um, yeah, you get a little bit of recognition from YouTube, which is a lot of hard work. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. So, <clears throat> yeah, if I'm ever watching someone on a regular basis and I see they're close to that, yeah, well, yes, I should be subscribing. Now, anyway, I've gone off on a tangent again, so focused. This is the, her little dress, which I made in, I don't know, video three or, yeah, I think it was three. It was when I started the blue one. I started working on her, her little pinafore, which is now completed. So yeah, it really is working out which color scheme we want to make Honey Bear. Did you match the colors to her, 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 <laughs> to her arts? I don't know. Everyone was going for blue and then they started talking pink and now you've all watched the purple one, the purple video. So it's been quite interesting to watch you all <laughs> change your mind. See what I mean? It's hard. But I think I have a bit of a better idea of what I'm going to do. But um, today we're going to work on the neutral one, which I thought was just not in the game. But it has drifted now towards probably the mannequin. In my head, I've got to bring together a bridal dressmaker. So this piece down here. And a lady that, yes, wore a bit of colour on the top half of her body, but definitely not on the bottom half of her body. And she was a, a simple lady. She, she enjoyed working with the finer things, but it was more in her craft room than in her life. So to me, this is like classic her. Um, understated, but yet full on elegance. So hey, I've got to bring those two things together on a mannequin it's possibly going to look like an absolute hodgepodge but anyway i'm up for the challenge so anyway stop talking girl come on corinne get into it now yesterday's video we sketched out and i've left the book at the other end of the craft table hold that thought guys i'm grabbing it <clears throat> yesterday we started thumbing through this book by Janice colston now, it's a brilliant book. If you don't own it, I'd highly recommend you grab it if you're a beginner because it uses the classic stitches. But what the trick is, is it combines them using different textile threads, ribbons, wools, cottons, pearl cottons. It combines these classic stitches together to make them look just randomly different. So I opened up the first page. And that's as far as I got. I saw this, I saw that, 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 and it became that. So that's where you find you've got a good book when you can't even get past the first page and you're already inspired. Like, I'm not even going to go any further because I have enough. I have enough. I have done a flip through of that book um, earlier in the year. Because at the beginning of the year, Rachel from Roxy Creations showed us that book when talking about Down the Garden Path for inspiration for flowers. So, yeah, brilliant. You know, I should open it up again, actually. 
and keep an eye on that page because what caught my eye is the different things she used to create these flowers. Like that's ribbon, that's thread, thread. So I sort of want to take a little bit of note of that because it's going to teach me to mix it up a little bit, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So I have my threads. The only issue I have is will I have the colours to blend in with this? Now, I've worked with this neutral before and I found it quite tricky to find what I need within my current selection of colours. So I'm going to give it a go, but there might be a case of I need to actually pick up a few more threads that best suit this colour. Now, my instinct is to go with grey, but I don't know if it actually is grey. There's two greys here. See what I mean? Like, this is a bluey, bluey grey, and that's like a, a brownie grey. Colour is a real challenge. I don't really want to bring in... Uh, pinks and blues and purples see that's not bad because of the gray in that piece I think we could use that it's a shame it's so big I really would like a fine one what's that that's blue now, blues and grays look together I always feel for um People that are colorblind. We've had staff from time to time in our Christmas shops that are colorblind, and it's quite interesting. You send them to the the bauble wall, and you'll ask them to bring back, um, say maybe the burgundy colored baubles. Could definitely use a bit of white, and they they come back with blue baubles. You know, just that's just one example. So yeah, I. I'd really find it a challenge to do what I'd do if I couldn't see my colours. I think your pieces would become quite unusual, needless to say. Now I'm looking at I'm looking at the book. And the only real ribbon she's used is in this here. And it's a variegated one. It's that one. Now, variegation is not really a luxury I can have because we're neutral. So what I might do is make, make that one there in the ribbon. How much ribbon to cut? I never know how much ribbon to cut. And then I'm like one petal short or... Where's those two idiot dogs? On cue. At least they're down the back of the block. <clears throat> Come on. All right. Now. I don't know if I will need that grey, but who knows? Once I get started, try not to overthink at all. Now, looking at the book, if we're going to do something and learn from our new found resource, the petals, we need to start at the top and layer them down so that it looks like they're... Uh, sort of in case so petal on top of petal so therefore the first petal will be the top one oh. so what have you all got planned for today I don't have a lot planned I'm getting ready to go to a retreat well, um, so we got a little, got a little email to say 
bring with you your threads and uh, some scissors and some beads if you want. And I'm like, well, my goodness, that's an open sentence. What colour threads, beads and whatnots do I want? <laughs> Send up replying back and saying, can you give me a hint of a colour? Because that is not quite enough information. So I've also been sort of having a little look at some of the photos, trying not to look too hard because I don't want to spoil my surprise of my projects that we'll be doing. Trying to gauge what colours are on the table so that I sort of know what to pack. And it hasn't helped. Needless to say, it has not helped. So I don't know. I'm thinking I'll just go with the flow. The main thing is to have my tools with. And I need to pack a light. You know, when you go to these retreats, I don't know if you've ever been to one, often the light is a bit ordinary. And I noticed on the table a lot of people have their lights with them. So I need to get myself a light. I do have one somewhere. I need to get in amongst the suitcases and the electrical appliances you don't use very often and try and find where the hang this craft light is. So I'm just laying down these little petals, trying to keep a bit of a curved shape to the piece as I work my way down. It's nearly like a, an ear of wheat. Is that the right word? If you want to visualise the shape a little bit. So, yeah, I was going to ask for you Melbourne ladies, I'm going to be going to Rosebud out on the peninsula for the retreat. So I need to travel between the Melbourne Airport and Rosebud. What really good craft shops, well, not so much craft shops, fabric shops, thread embroidery shops would be on my way that I could possibly have a little look at because I think I get in at like midday and um, we'll make my way across to the unit that I've hired. So, Mr. Google wasn't a great deal of help. So, um, I thought, oh, well, I'll ask you guys. So, throw into the comments the name of a business that you think I should go and have a little look at. I'll only have probably two hours by the time I get off the plane and make my way to the hire car and get myself on the road. I will probably only have two hours. I thought I'd have longer in Melbourne to visit a heap of friends and even Susanna out at rural Victoria. But I'm just, I just haven't. I thought I'd booked longer, but I haven't. So it's a bit of an in and an out, actually. But I will have those couple hours on Tuesday afternoon to maybe go across to a shop. So there's my flower, my little, my little stem of a flower. And then she's put green thread to build it up from there. So I'm happy with that. Let's finish this little guy off. Now I wonder if I can use it again somewhere else because I've got plenty left. <clears throat> be a shame not to have another little play with it. Okay. Might do a combination one up the top here, but 
What if I can't find a thread that goes with it? Hmm, maybe I do. I might do this. I probably have enough for six petals. This is like a, a star of petals. Now, Jennifer did use thread, but already I'm heading off on another tangent. I just don't want to not use this little bit of ribbon that's left. So I'm going to just use it up. Now I did go over all of the lines in black. Did I mention that with a friction pen? Because after I finished filming yesterday's video, I looked at it and thought, oh, that red pen is really starting to finish itself off. It's So I ended up just sketching back over everything. Why struggle looking if you can see some lines and it irons off, so you might as well give yourself some lines you can see. Come on. Okay. I love how Jennifer mixes it up a bit. I really, really like that. Oh, come on, just <laughs> it's starting to want to twist. Once ribbon starts being pulled through a few times different layers of fabric, it starts to distort a little. So you'll often find that it gets a bit bendy and starts twisting. That's why I think the secret to ribbon embroidery is to not cut yourself a big piece because the more it's used, the more it will um, start to break down. You can imagine it's such a wide, a wide, delicate thing and you're forcing it through a hole that a needle has made. So you always try and use a fairly big needle. Thanks to everyone who provided me tips on that really firm fabric that was on that one panel. And yes, my needle was not fine enough for it. I had one of my bigger needles out. So that's why it was such a drag to try and stitch on that fabric. Now, the one I'm talking about is this little guy that had the spot. That was really, like it nearly feels um, artificial. It's not, it's cotton. Because it's sister, like that one, and that one, they're fine. But that one with the spot, it was really hard to push a needle through. And as um, a few of you mentioned, what sort of thickness of needle did you have? And it wasn't, wasn't a really fine needle. And that would have definitely been heaps better. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. And I've only got a little bit left. So that's great. We've used it. Now that grey. Oh gosh, I wish I had a fine one of that. It's going to make an awful big... An awful big petal. I could probably use it on that one, hey? Yeah. Let's do it. I'm already going off, off track because that big petal one there is a wool. I might put wool at the bottom of it. This, this ribbon is beautiful. So mental note, if I'm going to use neutral on the seamstress mannequin with whites, I need to find myself some more ribbons that are greys and whites and um, say ivory and keep it, you know, I don't know. All right.
let's go so we might come from the top this is going to be a very big petaled daisy Take your time. It's not a fast process, ribbon embroidery, because you want to just make sure your, your ribbon lays where you want it to lay. I might do I sort of want to make it look like they're layered on top of each other, but not all in a row like that so I need to probably skip the next one and come over here and then bring one through over the top of them otherwise it's going to look like it's a little bit artificial I think yeah, so now this next petal will come up <clears throat> and over there. Okay, that's good. And then I might do them back to the way I was so that it sort of does look a bit layered. good and that oh, just enough just enough there we go beautiful how pretty is that if I do say so myself it's going to be good having these mood boards because I can glance at them and go well I really liked the look of that so if I then go well I don't have enough materials to do that again I know I can order somewhere or try and find a gray there's a darker gray but it's just not it's just not quite right I think I've already established that with his let's put these away now before this desk of mine gets into a hang of a mess and we will go further afoot because I think that's the most ribbon I'm going to get into this project because that's about all I got. There's heaps of supplies of ribbon on Etsy. If you don't have a, uh, a shop that sells ribbons. Okay. I don't think I want to use another colour. Like I could bring dusty pink in. There's a beige there. No, we don't need it. All right, let's now have a look at threads. I've got a few containers around from the previous. I th Do we get gold into it? We might hold that gold out. I know we've got silver down here, so it probably is be better if we went silvers. There's a green, but very fine. That's not bad. It's a brown. And then there's that brown. See, in there, uh, it's nearly a black, blacky gray. 
Let's have a look in here. So we've got no, see grey, it a blue grey is not it. it, has to be a brown grey. So we could certainly have a look at some of these beigey colours. Probably more that colour as well. That's good. That's like a, that's a really old crochet cotton. It was a tiny little bit wrapped up on a card. It's nearly a cord. It's like very fine cordage. There's a wool that's in creams. The other thing is, what are we going to use for the branches? There's a dirty grey. Let's call it a dirty grey. Yeah, that's a dirty grey. That's a dirty grey. And that's a dirty grey. Okay. I still think we could probably bring a bit of sparkle in. And it's not going to be gold. It's going to be more of a pewter, I think. There's a word I haven't used since since the uh, 80s. So that's more of a blue. Yep, it's a blue-grey again. All right, we haven't really got ourselves a greeny-grey for the stems. There's definitely nothing in there. have a color oh look at that one there we go that's not bad I think that wouldn't be too too bad I'd prefer it to be in a pearl cotton so it was nice and substantial but I don't think I'm gonna have that luxury I'll bring out this dark gray too just in case see that's closer to those little lines up there that's probably enough. I'm just going to be confusing myself. I have one more container. That's a bit of an unusual one. Oh, I like that. I definitely don't have a wool. Oh, well, we're going to use what we got, and it might just be fine. Okay. Got some something there that it looks roughly like it could match. Now, these petals, we probably need to build on our flowers a little bit more. I think I, think I want to do something with this wool, because I don't have many wools to work with. So, let's get some nice thick flowers in and we might do two two strands I just want to make sure it's thick enough don't you love experimenting when you've got no idea what you're going to do you're just sitting and stitching Do what are we going to do first? This is thick, so maybe we do up here and then we can go down to one strand. Or this, I hope it's not too thick, we'll soon find out. Let's get a petal into position and then so once again, I'm going to do the top 
stitch and I'm going to do lazy daisy stitch Yep, that's, that's good. I like that. I think um, Mary Ann made a comment, my mate. She's doing down the garden path and she sort of hasn't got back to it because her work's got really busy. So she's got, you know, a fair bit to do. And she made a comment that she's struggling with it to a degree that she doesn't know a lot of stitches. And I think this exercise here is a really good example that you only need to know a couple stitches. But I think what the secret is is to use different threads. So everything from wool right down to stranded cotton. And then you start vary, varying the stitches. Are they small? Are they big? Are they double thickness for, um, you know, two threads together? And I think that's where the creative concepts can really help you because you're you're using the common old lazy daisy, which is the case here. And at the end of the day, like now I'm thinking back to grandma and her teaching us embroidery as kids and my mum. Lazy daisy was the go-to stitch, wasn't it? We all did it. All of those doilies that we were embroidering were lazy daisies stitches. So there we go. That's good. I'm happy with that. Now I'm just going to catch a little stitch and just cut, knot that off. Now what we might do is we'll reduce this back to one now. And we'll find another little spot that can take a couple little stitches so we're sort of blending the same colours but elsewhere in this plant. Maybe we go up the top here. These are quite fine at the top of this branch. So I might just use the last of this thread up here. Just upright a little bit. Maybe a fraction longer. So it's like the tip of the sprig. I know when I start doing a bit of embroidery that is, I'm going to do another one down here, that is nature inspired. I then start looking at plants for the next day or so. <laughs> Do you guys find that as well? I'll be out in the garden now looking at sprigs and how they formed and if I was to stitch that branch, what would it look like? And now I'm going to leave it at just those three little stitches there and then we can do something else in there with something different. Okay, can we use it elsewhere? We could probably put it there, but we'll wait because, you know, got a lot here to play with. Now, these, these petals, I feel like they need to be Maybe a beige. And I'm going to keep it. I wish I had some wool. 
I'll use six strands of this stranded cotton. It's got a bit of a pink undertone to this creamy colour. Look, it's 40 minutes in already. I'm going to do... I thought I might figure out this and then go away and stitch it and then come back. But I think I'm going to do a second video, guys, because each little element is a different thread. If I could sit here and go, all right, we know the seven colours and they're in all of these locations and then I go away and do it. Well, that's fine, but Jennifer is making me stitched different things in different spots which means there is no way in the next 15 minutes I'm going to be able to work out a plan of attack for the rest of this piece so I think what I'm going to do is stop the camera at our hour then I'm going to turn it straight back on and go again I think I need to <clears throat> Now, if this was wool, I would have a bit more thickness than I'm getting here. So I'm actually going to start adding in a few extra petals than what I've drawn. Because I can already see that it'll be a little bit sparse. Gee, it's a pretty colour. I need to um, empty out. See, this is my little tray that I've used for the down the garden path. So I've got a few little empty trays and what I'm going to do is as we finish off this project, I'm going to keep these threads out because I know they work and pop them into my little tray. So then if I pick up needle and thread again for this project, I know at a quick glance which ones I used. I could take notes and be you know, organised, but I won't. Trying not to rush either. Like I could quickly stitch this, but I'm trying to take my time and form the petals nice and fat and plump because I think this particular flower can handle that sort of shape. I'm trying hard not to pull that too tight and give myself. Yeah, there we go. So there's those petals. That colour worked beautifully. Now I have a little bit of this thread left. So let's go find another small spot that a couple little buds could be made. Come on, not, that's it. Now, I'll go back up the top here. Maybe we do a couple up here. I might just do two. And then something else can be the two below it, as I've drawn four there. I could even get, here's an idea, 
Yeah, I might do this. I haven't even said the idea out aloud. I will get that white ribbon back out. And I'm going to put two little little buds. Two, where's the camera? Two little buds here, tiny. And then I might do something with the white ribbon here. I'm thinking. Let's get you again. Or do I bring this cream in? Mm. Let's do the cream. I changed mind. <laughs> Goodness me. And maybe I can put a little bit of cream into the center of that white flower that we first did to try and make it look like they're all meant to be connected. Or do we put a cream bead in there? Yes, yes, yes. Hang on. Hang on. I have a bead that will match that really well. Okay, oh, now we're cooking. So I'm going to do a tiny little bud at the bottom of this little cluster of two just to make it look like it's nearly a husk and that's come from out of the plant. Okay. Now we drop back down to here. And I didn't go to the top of the petal. I went to the bottom. So let's see what that does. We're doing it in reverse. Oh, I like how that twisted. Oh, it's different again. Ribbons are fun. Yep. And I might just finish it with the other two petals, I think. So I've done these different. I haven't pinned the ribbon down on itself. That's twisted now. That's got it. Then I'm coming up here. And down into there. Yep. Now what I might do is I'm going to put a bud of this into this guy. I know I said I was going to do a pearl. Oh, geez, what did I do there? I twisted it to the point where we don't even see the thickness of the ribbon. Let's try that again. Okay, that should give me just a pop of cream in there. See the little bit, the tiny bud? Where's the camera? See it there? So slowly pulling that in. Okay. Gee, I like it already and I haven't even added beads yet. Okay, I've got a little bit left. Where can we pop a little bit? Maybe I do these two over here. One. 
two and three just a little itty bitty splash of ribbon up there yeah there we go just a little one i've still got those up my sleeve oh i still got a little bit of ribbon left too is there what can we do what if we were to put another little bud here we'll just draw in a new leaf just the just the one and then i'll bring a little branch out from it Okay, how are we going for time? Oh, plenty of time. Okay, let's let's flip to the stems. And maybe I could do that before I turn the camera back on. I want to do a combination of greens and greens and this one, I think. Get rid of it. Now, this is not going to give me a thick result. So I might, might work up here. And I might, I've got six strands here, so I might do six strands for this here and then see what that looks like before I go up through here because that might need three so that it looks finer. So I might do the classic stem stitch. And see how that looks. Stems are tricky because if they're not the right thickness, they can overpower your embroidery. So you sort of need to be prepared to stop sooner rather than later and split your thread down if you feel like it's all you see is that big chunky um, stem. And I'm happy with that. Oh, look at the mess I've got on the back. Okay, I think that's a sign that I'm not going to go too much further. Oh, my goodness, look at that. Oh, boy, oh, boy. There you go, warts and all. You never see this in those professional embroidery videos, do you? <sighs> but it's the reality. Of what actually happens that's going to take a bit of time to work on and I don't want to pull the wrong thread mm. okay pass that is going to work so I think there was a bit here yeah there was and there's three in that I'm going to pick up this piece that was also the same color and I'm going to do stem stitch for the top half of that. I don't mind the colour. It's not too bad. But I definitely will need a, a grey sort of... Gosh, I'm not even finishing my sentences because I'm concentrating, guys. If you can tell when I'm really chatty about the world I live in, whatever I'm doing is just, just comes naturally to me so I can 
multitask by telling you a story. But when I'm thinking, I'm not as chatty. Maybe that's going to work. Now I need to get a little stem out to that little bud, but I think I'll go past it and then come back up to it. And I might put the thread. Yeah, I put the. I've come up. Yeah, it's a lazy daisy. I've come up in the centre of the lazy daisy stitch itself, so it looks like the th the bud is coming out from the top of the thread, uh, the top of the little sprig. It's a minor detail and you probably can barely see it, but it makes me feel good to think I've thought that deep into it. <laughs> That's it. So I work my way down. You know what? I don't like it. That is too thick up there. I'm going to unpick that. I just did that stitch there and it just felt more natural and I don't like that either. Yeah, all right. Well, there's like 15, 10 minutes of time. You see what I mean? See how it's really thick? It's overpowering the actual petals. So I'm going to undo all that. I'm going to redo it just in longer, thinner, less threads and um, I'll be back to show you the difference. All right, guys. Excellent. Look after yourselves and I will see you tomorrow in the next video and we'll just keep working on all of these different elements. Lovely. All right. Bye.